This video is for my wheel throwing students who are going to be working remotely for the next couple of weeks. I have a few kids who are out on quarantine and some other things. And uh, I'm sending home a couple of my tabletop small wheels with them so they can continue to work on their items at home. They are going to have their uh, tool bins, some bats, clay, um, basically all the supplies that they need so they can still work at home as long as they have a space, um, it should work. So uh, first of all, I wanted to talk a little bit about the wheels. These are the Shimpo Aspire tabletop wheels. It's a nice little, um, a, a little sturdy wheel. We can do everything on this wheel in class with the exception of our large platters. Uh, we can't do the large platters because the motor unit gets in the way and we, we can't exceed like a regular dinner plate size width. Um, they have a little splash pan and the splash pan has some tabs on it. So students, when you look at these, you will see a corresponding little um, holders for those tabs. You uh, put them on and then turn it counterclockwise and that will lock it in place. Now these do have bat pins and I'm giving you some bats for you all to work on. Um, there are also some plastic bats, but I do like these wooden bats. I think they're quite nice. Um, you can see that they have uh, plastic surrounding the bat pin holes there. Now when you put them on, you will really have to take some time to make sure that you're getting it lined up so it goes right on the hole. Now, when you do this, also you will find that sometimes you have it on the hole, but maybe it's wobbly. That means that you have to be a little bit more aggressive. And really kind of pound it to get it all the way down on the bat pins. There we go. Okay, so once you have that on, then you're actually ready to throw. Be aware of how much water you're using because if you go crazy, you're gonna fill this little splash pan up in no time. So you might wanna keep your sponge at hand to constantly squeeze it out, okay? Now, as far as trimming, um, you all know that when we have our, uh, the regular wheels in the back of the room, we use our Giffen grips. Um, I haven't had a chance yet to show you a couple of the alternative methods, so I'm going to show you in this video. Um, there are three different methods that I'm going to be showing you. Um, two will involve clay and doing it on a bat, but I'm going to do that one in a little bit. The other way involves the uh, trimmer that is made for the Shimpo Aspire wheels. Now, the trimmer okay, has a couple of splash pans, and you will see these lines on here. I actually put the lines on them uh, with a marker myself. Um, I'm going to remove the splash pan because in order to get this on, the splash pan is a little too large. So uh, the uh, trimmer just fits on over the bat pin holes. And the reason that I put the lines on there was to help me uh, get the items a little bit uh, more easily centered. If you are trying to center something and you don't have reference marks, it's a little bit harder for a beginner. Now, this trimmer is going to be really handy for things that are low and wide. It's not gonna be as handy for something that is tall, but this is what I have on hand to demonstrate how to trim, so uh, I will be using this. Now, I can use the reference lines to by eye, I'm looking at it and trying to get this to look like it's uh, fairly centered. And then I'm going to loosen up all of the attachments and slide them in until it looks like it is centered, okay? And then once it's centered, you will turn it on slowly to make sure that it actually still is centered. Um, these wheels have a power switch on one side, and you can orient this in different directions. Um, I'm just orienting it like this, so the uh, power button is near me, um, because I can then use this as a, s a little stabilizing shelf for my, uh, my right elbow. Um, of course, you could orient it differently if you would like to. Um, 
So the power button is on, you know it's on when it is illuminated, okay? And I'm going to turn it on slowly, first of all, just to make sure that it looks like it's sort of in, in the center. Now, as I turn that on, I can see it's just a tad bit off in one direction, so I'm gonna slide this over just a smidge. All right, students, now that this looks like it's centered, you will go ahead and trim in the same manner that you normally would, but you have to be aware, there's nothing holding this down. This is only holding it from the side. So if you put any sideways pressure on the top, um, you can throw it off. So one of the key things is always hold your left hand on it. Oh, and by the way, um, I don't think it really affects my two kids that are at home uh, this week, but these only go with the right-handed rotation. So if you're a left-hander, you're gonna have to trim uh, right-handed. So I am going to lock together my hand. So if you kind of form uh, a nice stable point, remember that you always want that stable triangle. Your elbows are two stable po points of the triangle and your hands are the other. So your hands are locked together. And then my other trick is I'm holding the tool with my right hand, but I'm also stabilizing it with my left. So my hands are locked back here, and the, I'm holding the tool physically with the right hand, but also touching it and stabilizing it with the left. And then I'm going to take the fingers of my left hand, I'm going to stabilize it on the bottom. Now I'm going to use the upper part here so I can hold my tool in a way to show you. So. As you trim, remember that you are holding down from the top. Now, another little trick that um, I can give you. So remember, I trim the exterior of the foot first. So you're doing the exterior of the foot where that angle change happens on the inside of the pot. The exterior first. Now, there is a little trick that I can show you, and that is you can use something on the top to help hold this. So if you have something like a little cap, it could even be like a cap of a milk, milk jug or something like that. All right, I'm going to put the cap in the middle and then I can rest my left hand on it. Now what that does is it helps to really spread out my pressure so I don't have one particular pressure point. And then it just helps to hold it so I am holding it downward, right? So I'm pushing downward as I'm trimming and it keeps me from knocking the pot off. Without that downward pressure and you're throwing or you're trimming a tall form like this, the chances are greater that you could inadvertently knock your piece off. All right, so once you have trimmed the exterior then you can use your ribs. Now remember, you have the ribs that I made, which are out of the card. You could, you could use those, but I also did put a mug tools rib in your bin, student, so you could use that as well. But this also works real nicely. Now for the interior of that foot ring, I'm just taking off the, I had some chunky things there on the top. For the interior of the foot ring, I am going to have to remove this. And remember that the thickness of the foot ring is going to be similar to the thickness of the wall. So it's a little less than a quarter of an inch in thickness. So I'm going to go straight down. Again, if you have gone straight down with the outside of the foot, when you do the inside of the foot, that should work as well. All right, so students, uh, who are at home this week each have a couple uh, each have one of these trimmers now I only have two of the trimmers so if I end up by getting a third person that goes remote they won't have one so the next method of trimming that I want to show is uh, doing it without a trimmer so to take this off you may need to loosen it back up from one side so you can pull the pot out and students, when you're at home, you can take all of these trimmings, these leather hard trimmings, and you can just spritz them down with water real quick. 
and you can put them back in your bag so you can eventually recycle that. All right. Now for the next method, I'm going to reassemble the wheel. All right, students, I have my wheel reassembled, and now I want to explain two different methods of trimming okay so tap centering is something that you can do when you place your pot on the uh, bat and you can just tap it until it approximately looks in the center so I'm really looking at the the rim down here and I'm trying to tap center the rim so let me just throw that off a little bit more so you can kind of see. So I'm just gently kind of tapping it until it looks a little bit more centered down there at the base, okay? And then once you have it tap centered, you can use what are referred to as lugs which are just pieces of clay. Three pieces are usually what I do, so I put them equally spaced. And of course, your pot needs to be leather hard. If you're doing this and your pot is plastic, you're gonna squish your rim, which you don't wanna do, okay? So the lugs can hold the, the piece in place just like the little trimmer did, and you can still use the same trick of holding the bottom in place with say like a little cap if you don't wanna put your hand directly on it. The other method that I want to show you real quickly, this is creating a chum. And for this, I'm going to take a wedged ball of clay and I'm going to center it and rib off some of the water. And by the way, when you are throwing on these little masonite mats, you may choose to perhaps add just a little bit of moisture. Sometimes it helps the clay to stick a little bit because the bat is very, very dry. So when I use a chum, a chum goes up inside of a form to help hold it. It's sometimes a little bit more stable. Another method of uh, centering is using a chuck, and a chuck is an open form. And uh, I usually only use a chuck when I have a really narrow opening and a wider bottom, such as maybe a base, if that needs to be trimmed. Okay, so right now I'm just centering up and doming this piece of clay. Now the purpose is the clay is going to go up inside. So I need to uh, center it in such a way that the clay will fit up inside. So let's just do a comparison, and you can see that's pretty much going to fit up inside a little bit. And then I'm going to rib off any water at all. You want to rib the water off. If you don't rib the water off, it's going to get stuck on your rim, and you don't want that. Okay. So here's a little trick that I sometimes do. I'm just going to make a couple of reference lines. The reference lines just help me to center this. So as I put it on here now, I want to make sure that it looks level. That is not bad. And I could use the exact same trick, you know, of using the little cap. Now, students, one other thing that I wanna uh, tell you about, since you are working on a uh, matching cup set, one thing that I want to make sure that you're aware of is when you are trimming uh, your matching cup set, you wanna make sure that you're trimming your uh, profile so your feet are the same width. So you can uh, set it on there, make a corresponding mark, and then you can trim.
and I am kind of keeping my foot on the pedal because if something happens and it starts to go loose, I want to be able to shut it off immediately. All right, when done trimming, you just kind of ease it off a little bit and then just take your finger around on the inside to make sure that it is smooth. And that is three different ways that you can trim using one of these tabletop uh, trimmers. If you want to see how to do a chuck, I do have another video on that. And uh, students, good luck.